Has science conclusively proven you are what you eat? Not yet. But it is finding evidence suggesting that what you eat may help determine how you feel. Susan Spencer reports our cover story. Let's see what else you got. Ah. So this is a shot from Japan. and this Globe-trotting like, uh, photographer Dave Krugman feels at home no matter where he is in the world. This is in uh, Taiwan, actually. Taiwan. You always take your camera with you. Yeah. Just but he hasn't always felt comfortable inside his own head. You've had issues with depression? Yeah, in my life I have. Even as he was building an Instagram following of about 300,000. It wasn't matching up with the way I was feeling about life, which was like that I wasn't enjoying my day-to-day -day life, really. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. He tried therapy, then antidepressants, and finally ended up with an unconventional psychiatrist who posed an unconventional question. Did he ask you specifically what you ate? Yes. What do you eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner? Yeah, we definitely went through it. And thinking about what he put in his mouth really opened his eyes. It made me realize I would just eat whatever popped into my head at that moment. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll go get some ramen. That sounds great. Like Chocolate that. cake. Yeah. Chocolate cake. <laughs> What's um, the matter with that? Food is medicine. Food is brain medicine. Psychiatrist Drew Ramsey is Dave's doctor. In your everyday life, the number one factor that you have control over in terms of your mental health, it's at the end of your fork. His specialty is the daily special and how it affects your mind. Dr. Ramsey calls this growing new field nutritional psychiatry. Do you treat food as you would a drug and say, this is your prescription for anchovies? And how does it work? All of my patients have a sense of foods that I want them to be eating more of. Those foods, you guessed it, the Mediterranean diet. Colorful vegetables, seafood, olive oil, and lots of leafy greens. We have some sauteed kale here. That's Samantha L. Kreef, a trained chef who works with Dr. Ramsey. Now, this is probably my favorite brain food on the table because these are purple sweet potatoes. Together, they showed us how to make Thanksgiving better for your brain. Oysters, anyone? Well, Susan, someday maybe you'll like the oyster. <laughs> I thought you were going to give that to me. <laughs> no. A lot of people don't like oysters. Right. They're these raw, slimy, scary things right. that maybe make you sick if you don't eat it in the right exactly. month. Exactly. Food fear. Would you ever sit down and eat a cheeseburger and fries? Well, I wouldn't eat a cheeseburger because I don't really eat that much meat, and I don't eat dairy. But I would eat, like, a salmon burger with collard green wrap or something like that have that all the time. <laughs> yeah. One of my staples. Unlike cheeseburgers, Dr. Ramsey says oysters have unique nutrients, making them one of the best foods for depression. Why can't I get these same nutrients out of a multivitamin? First of all, um, oyster date night is incredible, and salmon date night is incredible, <laughs> and fish oil and supplement date night has never really been much fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's an idea that people have that we can just take supplements and be healthy, and that's simply not true. What can you say conclusively about the impact of food on depression? Very conclusively, food impacts your risk of getting depressed. And some recent research seems to back that up. In one study of people diagnosed with depression, a brain-healthy diet added to standard treatment relieved all symptoms in about a third of the patients. As for criticism that the science still is inconclusive... The evidence has really just started. We've not had any randomized clinical trials about food and the treatment of mental health until 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. So this is very new. Given all the emphasis on food, what role do you see for antidepressants? Antidepressants are a great treatment for depression. You see the two as complementing one another. The two complement each other perfectly. This one for sure. Yeah. While the doctor writes the prescriptions, the chef makes the house calls. Do you ever go so far as to physically take patients to the grocery store and say, this, not this, this? Absolutely. I go to their homes and cook with them. If you still find this whole brain food thing hard to swallow, Neuroscientist Lisa Moscone at New York City's Weill Cornell Medical College says the proof is in the pictures. When you look at a brain scan mm -hmm. of somebody who has, say, the Mediterranean diet yeah. and somebody else who doesn't, can you look at that brain scan and literally see a difference? Very often, yes. And this is a very healthy-looking brain. The brain on the left belongs to a woman on the Mediterranean diet. 
the other one to a woman who eats standard Western fare, high fat, high carbs. It shows actual shrinkage with likely cognitive decline, Moscone says, and she blames our lousy American diet. You tell me yes or no if somebody who's thinking about their brain health would eat the following. Okay. French fries. No. Ice cream. Mm, no. Bacon. No. Ooh, that was painful. <laughs> Fruit Loops. No. <laughs> Don't laugh. Pop tarts. No. Pizza. Uh, no. How about anchovies? Yes. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, it is amazing that I'm here. <laughs> Except for those anchovies, that's mostly stuff Dave Krugman won't go near today. Waking up, having like eggs and some avocado, I definitely uh, just have more energy throughout the day. What about antidepressants? Are you still taking them? No, 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 I'm not taking medication for depression right now. Your medication is breakfast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My medication is, is very good Italian olive oil. <laughs>